According to the International Civil Aviation Organization, they found more than 30 existing classifications of flight training devices and simulators around the world. An international working group comprising manufacturers, operators and regulators have worked for many years to set a global standard. Most of the countries has adopted an international standard developed by ICAO that boils all definitions down to seven numerical and four alphabetic levels. First of all, if the simulator has a number, that means it does not move. The flight training devices, the ones that do not move, are classified level 1 through level 7. Levels from 1 to 3 are no longer in production. Level 7 refers to helicopter devices leaving levels 4, 5 and 6 for fixed wing flight training devices. Only devices that move can use the word simulator in their title. Simulators are classified level A through level D. Level A barely exists. They have less sophisticated visual systems and little data for simulating ground effects. A motion system is required with at least three degrees of freedom. Level B requires three axis motion and a higher fidelity aerodynamic model than level A does. Level B would give you 80% of initial training for a type rating and 100% of recurrency training if you have circle to land privileges. This simulator can be the lowest level of a helicopter flight simulator. All instrument currency requirements, including a landing and a circle to land, can be met in the sea level simulator. A sea level simulator requires a motion platform with all six degrees of freedom. Also, lower transport delay over levels A and B. The visual system must have an outside wall horizontal field of view of at least 75 degrees for each pilot. You can do almost everything in a level D simulator, including full type ratings. Requirements are the same as for level C with extras, for example, daylight scenery. They have better data and tire performance tolerances. The motion platform must have all six degrees of freedom and the visual system must have an outside wall horizontal field of view of at least 150 degrees with a distant focus display. Realistic sounds in the cockpit are required as well as a number of special motion and visual effects. Only level C and D simulators can be used for a full instrument proficiency checks. 